we started with a uh, few breathing exercises. Similarly, we'll start with what is a better research, what kind of mindset you should have, just one minute. With the quotation by eminent uh, statistician by our name Altman. Yeah, before that, the outline of my talk would be something like this. We'll be talking about the data, experimental versus observable. There are uh, variables called nuisance variables. So we will see what are those nuisance variables. How to handle nuisance variables using propensity score analysis. Examples and R code. We cannot implement it here. I'll just show the code to you. Yeah, before that, let me tell you about uh, this great person, Altman, who has written an excellent book for medical statisticians. Those who are here, everybody must read this book, Practical Statistics for Medical Research. So he said to maximize the benefit to the society, you need to not just do research, but do it well. So keeping the theme in mind, researching the research, remember this quotation, because in 1994, he wrote a scathing uh, editorial attack on the scandal of poor medical research. And he writes in the editorial of British Medical Journal the following things. We need uh, less research better research and research done for the right reasons. Why did he write this? He was frustrated to see the misuse of statistics in medical journals. Almost invariably more than 70% research articles published in medical journals, even medical journals, are using misusing statistical techniques. So in 2015, uh, he was interviewed and asked one question, Professor uh, Altman, do you repent by writing this particular article in 1994? And it was a shocking reply. He said, no, no, I regret that. I should have used the scandal of bad medical research instead of poor medical research. So that was in 2015, he passed away in 2018. He was a professor at statistics at Oxford University. I think everybody should read this paper, The Scandal of Poor Medical Research. He heavily criticizes, say, a doctor giving a wrong medicine to a patient, we say it's unethical, unprofessional. So if a doctor is using, or a medical or healthcare professional is using misusing statistics, what can you call that? It's unprofessional behavior. So I'm happy that uh, Professor Shukula has started this clinic, so every medical researchers can visit that and take the advantage. And let us see, do the justice to this, minimize the scandal of poor medical research. This is a very interesting paper, I think you should, not paper, editorial, everybody must read this. Things have not changed much. That's why this particular conference probably. Okay. <clears throat> a couple of things uh, today I want to discuss with you. How many are doing research here? Are all are freshers? Any medical research? They, they will be benefited by this particular approach. Anyway, you plan, uh, you want to do research, you get an idea that I want to do research. For example, this is a classic study, streptomycin cures pulmonary tuberculosis. It's an idea, doctors got it in 1944. We call it as a hypothesis, a postulate, a business, I mean, not business problem. It's a problem, right, which we want to solve. So, in fact, uh, this is uh, history now. 44 doctors thought about it, whether streptomycin can cure 
TB or not. This is a very fast spreading disease, dangerous disease. And a successful trial was conducted. Consider another set of problems. For example, saturated fat leads to higher chance of heart attack. Oh, why should I believe this? Those who suffer from high lipid, doctors suggest that uh, you take statins, the medicines for that, lowering lipid profile, the lipids. <clears throat> Why should I believe it? Consider another problem. This, uh, we experienced this last two years. Does mask wearing in the community setting reduce the level of COVID-19 infection? Now all ICMR, including Prime Minister, everybody has told us to wear mask. Why? Is there any evidence to that? Why should I wear it? We have two experts from ICMR, they can guide us. On what basis they decided they force us to wear mask. You know, multi-million business, people earn a lot of profit on this. Sanitizers, sanitizers and uh, masks. Where is the proof? As a statistician, we must question this. How do we investigate uh, these such similar hypotheses. You know, a recent scandal about Dolo versus the other paracetamols. Every doctor prescribed us Dolo 650, those who suffered from COVID. I did not take it. I took Calpol 650 because I knew that both are same. But others did not believe that. They said, doctor is telling, take Dolo, I should take Dolo. Now what happened? A Bangalore-based company was forcing doctor, I mean, encouraging doctors to prescribe Dolo 650. Now income tax has raided that company. They earned huge profit. Now where is statistics here? The statistician should question this. On what basis Dolo was prescribed on a larger scale, a massive scale? Where is the proof? So this talk, I am focusing on asking questions why. The entire, the today's uh, sessions, if you see, mostly they are focusing on what the pattern searching or the exploring the data. I'll be talking on why certain things happen. What are the causes, cause and effect things. You need data to do this. If you have data, your entire afternoon session will be devoted for that. Correlation, regression, classification, prediction, all those ML models and so on and so forth. Or even goodness of it. The data are there already. There is a design behind that and the data are generated. Certain statistical methods can be used to model it. But we are asking, if I want to investigate something, why I should take Dolo, I need some evidence and that evidence comes in the form of data. Next question, natural question is from where I should get the data? Right? It doesn't come on its own. You have to put the efforts. What efforts I should take? Where do I search for it? If somebody gives you data, okay, you will do goodness of it, you will do correlation, regression and so on. But I'm asking a fundamental question. How do I get the data? I want to do some research on this. The streptomycin is a good medicine for cure, curing tuberculosis. Or statins are good for lowering lipids. Why should I believe it? So there are various ways of gathering data. And what we say is, we have data, we develop relational models. Very clear. But here, we have, we don't have anything. So I need some instrument to generate data. Now what are the ways I can generate data? One everybody knows is sample surveys. You order food, a feedback form is given to you, you write the feedback ratings. Right, day in and day out people collect the data for that. Second is, uh, if sample surveys are not possible like streptomycin. Data doesn't, you cannot just go on giving streptomycin uh, tablet to the patients and uh, see that whether they recover or not. I need to do experiments, right? So that we call experimental data. Any other source? 
other than these two? Like wearing mask, for example. Can I do the experiment? So one group, I will say, you wear the mask, I will force them to wear. The other group, I will say, don't wear it. Suffer from COVID. Now, will you agree? You will not. Yeah, Abhishek? Um, medical, <laughs> related to medical. Business aisle. Uh, that, that already I covered, sample surveys. Another is experimental data, like I said, uh, streptomycin trials or dolo trial and so on. So I can give the medicines, I collect the data, the reaction time. Any other thing which is very prominently seen <laughs> everywhere is this one. Observable data or what we call, you know, the patient comes to a clinic, he registers at the register counter, the data gets generated. We call a lot of electronic health records are available nowadays. And this is the major challenge to uh, the healthcare professionals. Those who are here are likely to start new research in healthcare. They should uh, read more about electronic health reports or EHR. It's a very challenging thing. Just like big data in business community, we have the challenges of made open by EHR collections. Observable data as Cochrane has defined with some cause and effect in mind, causal inference, people collect data for quasi experimental data. In fact, last two years, if you see the patterns in economics, two groups got Nobel awards for the work they did it in inference from observable data. Abhijit uh, Bhatt Chatterjee or Banerjee. And his team got the award, Nobel Award for the work which he did in natural experimentation. Actually, he implemented all these, he collected the observable data in MN Rega and other schemes and compared the effect of social strategies and economic strategies. So we have uh, different uh, types of instruments which will give rise to set of data. Do you see the difference? What I'm trying to say is, one side, if somebody gives you data, you have standard statistical methodology or what we call data science methodology, you can analyze the data. If data doesn't exist, I need to generate it. Now, the generation comes under experimental and observable data. Experimental data has a very scientifically developed tool by R.A. Fisher for the first time. In 1923, he wrote a book on design of experiments. Several uh, editions have come out of that book. One should look at it. So we are talking about experimental uh, and observational data. The experimental data goes like this. Uh, you set up an experiment. Suppose you want to know whether um, Dolo works better or Calpol 650 works better. So I'll make, I'll take 100 patients, I'll divide it into two groups. One I'll give Dolo, another group I'll give Calpol, and at the end I will study the reaction time. In how many hours the fever went down? and then decide which medicine is better or which is not better or both are same or equally effective. This is how we conduct the experiments. In electronic uh, health records, as the name suggests, the all vital signs, the insurance related matters, laboratory trace, everything is recorded about patient, patient's history, how the disease progressed, how he recovered from that, how long he stayed in the hospital, so on and so forth. So we have this EHR data. Experimental data, or what do we call uh, randomized control trials, is the gold standard in data collection. First trial happened in 1948. The streptomycin was tested against bed rest. The patients were, one group was administered streptomycin, another was a bed rest and then 
which one was better for curing tuberculosis was noted down. And finally concluded that streptomycin is the better medicine for it. And later on improved a lot. So we get hold of target group, divided into two parts. This is called randomized control trials. This is a gold standard in generating experimental data. It has a very nice properties, uh, very systematic way of analyzing data using statistical tools and so on. Some terms and notations I need to discuss further. One, let us start with a small example. <clears throat> The diuretics are given to lower blood pressure. Okay, this is the problem. Which diuretic is better for lowering blood pressure? Now, this is called, some terms are used, the dependent variable and independent variable. Some of you are aware of this terminology. Dependent variable is the, how much the blood pressure gets lowered response variable, the remaining things are called independent variables or the risk factors. The high levels of blood, blood cholesterol, high blood pressure and all those body related parameters, the age, etc. So we have two things, one is dependent, another is independent, response versus stimulus. Experiments are run at different factor levels. We call it levels. Each run of the experiment, we will call it as a intervention or treatment. Like dolo is a treatment. How much time it takes to recover your headache from headache is the response time. <coughs> uh, let us look at a very interesting example to introduce one more term. Look at this. 80 patients were selected for this study. One particular drug was administered, 20 recovered. When drug was not given, 16 recovered. Recovery rate was 50%. When drug was given, 40% when no drug was given. What is the conclusion? Very simple the drug looks like a better treatment. Patients do benefit from the particular drug. Is that clear? Now look at the f interesting part. Now a statistician working with this group thought, why not look at the male-female responses? So they collected the data, prepared a PO table, and the same, the 80 persons were looked at again. Under the drug treatment, 60% recovered among the males. When no drug was given, 70% did not recover. Now you see the contradiction. What about among the females, what happened? 20% recovered when drug was given, 30% when no drug was given. So. What do you conclude from this? In general, people get recovered if the drug is even. But if you look at male-female things, the drug looks like ineffective. Better not to give drug. Patient will be happy probably. Right? Is it something fishy or what, what is happening here? Is this mathematics or lunatics? I mean, nobody will believe such things, right? This is called the Simpson's paradox. I started with poor research, bad research. You know, many, many people, whether it is business or in healthcare, they make such mistakes. And remember, so among the lot, uh, the drug is effective, but male, female wise, uh, it is ineffective. Now, whether I should give drug or not, how do I decide? Something is funny here. Simpson discovered this in 57. 
Now, why this happens, we want to talk about it. Variables like age, time, gender, like here, gender is the culprit. They are called nuisance factors. And every experiment, every study has this problem. Those that may affect the outcome variable but are not of primary interest, they are called noise variables or nuisance variables. And if you are careless in ignoring this nuisance variables, as the name suggests, you, are, you will get bound to get misleading results. That is the conclusion from this Simpsons paradox. Right? So, while analyzing the stat data, be careful about it. And many, many, as I said, I mentioned in the initial stages, poor medical research, the reason is this. People don't realize the Simpsons paradox plays havoc with your results. So be careful about it. The culprit is the presence of nuisance factors. Another example which will illustrate this, uh, this is about uh, cancer study. The outcome variable is the number of months a patient lives after being placed on a treatment. So what is treatment here? There are three potential treatments given to cancer patients. One treatment with three levels, drug A, B and C. We want to know uh, whether these three drugs are equally good or equally bad. Or which one I should prefer finally. Okay, so problem is very simple. I have three types of treatments given to be given to the cancer patients. How do I decide which one I should continue to give? So data was collected and I want to test this. How do I test this? Uh, any elementary book will tell you to go for analysis of variance test. Okay, I did that. I got this. Look at the p-value, small value. So what is the insight? All three drugs are different. Or one of, may, one of them may be different. But that doesn't tell me much. So I go step, one step ahead. I calculate something. I want to answer, OK, they are all different, but which one I should prefer later? for later use. So there is a thing called least square mean. So I calculate that based on the analysis of variance theory. And I get for corresponding to drug A, 40.66 is the mean value, adjusted mean value. That is called least squares mean, LS mean. For treatment B, it is 24. For C, it is 13. Now, my conclusion based on this will be treatment one is clearly the best. Why? This 40.66 is the, the lifespan for a cancer patient to live after taking the treatment. So he is going to live for more number of years. So good for that patient, right? So does, what does this imply? This implies that treatment A should be preferred for future use. Full stop. Now, I don't keep quiet. I continue to look at the data. See, this is one thing you must learn, a practicing statistician or everybody. Anybody who is going to use statistics is always listen to your data. Don't believe in the statistical numbers or the techniques, whatever the output, you get it from the computer. So what we call listen to the data. So I just plot this data once again. Plot of y versus x by treatment. So y is here, the life, what is that? Lifetime. X-axis represents the duration of cancer onset, and one, two, three denote the treatment numbers. 
Now, if you see here carefully, do you see that? One, two, three, all taking treatment one where in the early stages of the cancer disease. So those people, those patients who were given treatment one. Treatment to whom, whom were given? It was given to the middle stages, that is persons already had cancer already in the second stage probably, and treatment two started. All and treatment three were in the later stages given. So this was the distribution of treatment one, two, three, different stages, different administration. And uh, earlier case, I did not take this into account. So I decided that I should, uh, I should incorporate this information into my analysis. I reanalyze the data and I get these results. Again, p-value corresponding to treatment is significant. I conclude that the duration of the, conclude from this, list squares mean, now look at the interesting part. Initially we got this. without bothering about when the patient first time the cancer was detected and that the drugs were given. So in that case, I got 40.66, the LS mean and the treatment A was better. Now when I in incorporated this particular information, I get exactly reverse results. Treatment number three, the average uh, life yet to be lived is 26.26, then 11.98 minus 3.58. And what does it mean? It means not treatment one, but treatment three is better than treatment one. Why did this happen? If you have forgotten when the treatment why the particular drug was given at what stage is very important. If your analysis does not incorporate this information, you're bound to get wrong results. The first Simpsons paradox, you forgot that age, gender was playing a role in showing the response, the recovery time. You got wrong results. Here, you forgot to add the nuisance variables, you got the wrong result. Nuisance variable here is time, though it is insignificant here in the analysis of table, variance table, the entire conclusions change drastically. Now, this happens because of presence of nuisance variables. So, when you plan to do some research work, always remember that there are the nuisance variables always present externally and unless you think about that, how to handle it carefully, your results will not be correct. Again, remember what Altman said, poor research, medical research do happen because of these factors. So many research journals, you open any medical journal, they start with some data, they say we conducted blind randomized control trial. We got that we are showing that this drug is better than this drug. We tried 10 patients and so on and so forth. Always question that. Find out what are the nuisance variables which may impact this and how to handle it. So this bias or what is called a selection bias creates a lot of problems. You have believed something, the facts are something different they will not match and there will be definitely misleading results. So that will lead to poor medical research. What Altman said, bad medical research. Just based on the number of publications, the research quality will not be decided upon. It has to be good research. Now, what is better research? I mean, in this case, think of the culprits, which may impact your results. And here are the nuisance factors. And that's the fact. Every, 
In fact, I was working in Swiggy and we had a lot of problems with the, this type of observable data. For example, one of the problems was how to reduce the cost per delivery. When you place an order, you are hungry and you want to get immediate uh, snacks at 4 o'clock. How do I do that? I just place an order, wait for that. But the company has to pay a certain amount for delivering the item to your home. Now, every company wants to earn profit. Nobody is doing charity work, including educational institutes like Symbiosis. They want money. Now, how do I do that? How do I reduce that cost? So what are the nuisance factors? One is the weather, the peak hour traffic, the delivery boy's behavior. His motorbike fails suddenly. Then how do I change that structure, right? The cost will go up. So cost, total cost will definitely shoot up, and that creates the problem. So not only in medical, but every field, if you see, these are the problems which are associated with the data analysis. Now, our question is, how do I do that? Nuisance factors, most of the times, are known, and you can control it. Like, uh, as I said, uh, age group of a patient, for example. You know the patient's age, you can tune the treatment which will suit to his age. If he is crossing, say, age 80 years, a harsh treatment cannot be given to the patient. So something can be controlled. Nuisance factors are known but uncontrollable. You cannot do like weather conditions. You cannot change the weather, you cannot stop the rain. You know that, but you cannot do anything. And lastly, nuisance factors are unknown and uncontrollable. Now, every study do have more than one of these. And uh, if you ignore this, probably, most likely many researchers don't take into account these facts and they lead, get the misleading results. A problem like this, does mask wearing in the community setting reduce the level of COVID-19 infection? How do, I, how do I test this claim, this hypothesis? What should I do? There are two ways. One, gold standard is conduct randomization, uh, randomized clinical trials or controlled trials, RCTs, to avoid all those effects of nuisance variables which is clearly an invisible approach here. By the way, I can ask ICMR experts, Sari, how did you decide about mask wearing? And what type of study it was done by ICMR? Okay, every, including Prime Minister, everybody told us to wear mask. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, he will talk about that part. Just two minutes, yeah. Uh, actually, when do you do a hypothesis driven research? You don't have to do every time. For example, how did they decide? They did not do any randomized control trial. See, they understood the, the, the physiology part, they understood how does this, how things happen. Right? What is the route of transmission? So doing a clinical trial to find out should uh, wearing mask is beneficial or not, that is unethical. It is something like this. Suppose I want to test uh, <laughs> parachute. Is parachute <laughs> helpful or not? Am I going to do a clinical trial? I'm not going to take 100 and push them <laughs> without parachute and 100. So I think it's not RCT, though it's a gold standard, but it is not for every situation, right? So basically not possible to do uh, in, in COVID kind of situation, right? So what was the route of transmission, right? How things, so that was based on the science, not based on the, it's not data driven. No, that's what my point. RCT is infeasible, unethical most of the times. Therefore, we have observable data. My, the second topic of this. 
we have quasi experimental or natural experimental data we have seen people in fact uh, let me add something to his uh, this thing stanford university group medical scientist they conducted rct for mask wearing in bangladesh and the, the paper is also published in lancet or some medical journal uh, so there they said that okay two groups were made one group was asked to wear mask another group was asked not to wear mask very risky thing proposition in fact but they did rct for that and they concluded that finally mask wearing is beneficial to avoid covid infection so at least one rct i know for this problem also it has been done norm generally most of the situations uh, this is unethical to do it i cannot force somebody not to wear it there is a risk involved in that so these are all discouraged but we have observable data as i said observable data means we have back in mind the cause and effect thing so we do collect it and uh, how do i analyze that data is the problem using data from quasi experiment or ehr to estimate causal effect this is in fact uh, as i said the nobel awards were also given the work based on these particular concepts so for this setup is this i define a treatment variable d which is equal to 1 if the drug is given zero otherwise now what the problem which we are tra tackling is about how do i do cause effect analysis based on observable data like as i said if mask cannot be forced to wear or not to wear i have data on that some people are wearing mask some people are not wearing masks i have collected the data and how should i proceed so this is what we want to answer so let me define a treatment variable d equal to 1 if drug is given zero otherwise now d is a random variable why d is a random variable think about it let the potential outcomes y1 and y0 potential outcome with treatment d for example at uh, the uh, cancer drug is given how much is the life span left for the patient is the outcome that is recovery time why not potential outcome when drug is not given so without given also people get recovered how much is that so i have two things one is the variable called d another variable y y1 and y0 i want to see ultimate aim is to measure which treatment is better like dolo and calpol 650 controversy i talked about whether these two are similar or not how do i estimate it whether the effect of dolo and the effect of calpol is same very simple measure delta i if i define it is the difference between two possible outcomes y i1 and minus y i0 for ith individual so problem with this particular uh, uh, difference is do you see the problem we cannot compute this y i1 minus y i0 why we cannot com compute this one what could be the problem the problem is i cannot give dolo to the person patient number 1 and patient number 1 i cannot give calpol at the same time so i don't have these measurements with me i can give one tablet to only one patient he suppose he is suffering from covid i administer dolo to him also i cannot give him calpol at the same time right that is the problem so i don't have observations and therefore i cannot estimate delta i however i can estimate the average value that is possible that is possible under one important condition why i one like wearing mask whether it is effective or not how do i do that one person doesn't wear a mask and he also wears a mask and see whether covid is he may get infected with covid is that possible to do these such things collect the data 
One person cannot act in both ways. He cannot, at the same time, wear the mask and doesn't wear the mask. That is not possible. It is possible only if, if you conduct randomized trials. That is why the randomization word is very important. Because I find a similar looking people, similarly behaving persons, and then one person is, two persons are suffering from, say, headache. I give one to Dolo to one, Dolo Calpol to other, because those two persons are similar, as if they are one and the same. And that is why randomized experiments, what we call gold standards. But that is not always possible. So what should I do? And there comes the, my, this one topic is propensity score analysis. So our randomized uh, concept is uh, very critical here, which Fisher made it very popular in his book on design of experiments. So what it means is probability that the treatment is given, given the covariates is 0.5. So randomization gives equal chance to both the things. In observable data, the probability is unknown. Now, this is very important to understand here. So what are we talking about so far? We are talking about the impact of nuisance factors. Randomization somehow balances the nuisance value. By mechanism of randomization, we see that similar things happen, assignment happens randomly, that is equal probability 0.5. But in general, this is not possible, so we say that probability of d equal to 1 given x is unknown, now how do I find it out? Can I, so ultimate aim is to find out the causal effects, so we follow the following things. Uh, we have a data of this type. I have a treatment 1, 1, denoted by 1 or 0, no treatment 0, treatment given 1, like wearing mask, not wearing mask, dolo, calpol, dolo is given 1, calpol is given 0, and so on. So I collect the data, y11, y21, the question marks, what do they indicate? If I give the dolo, I cannot give calpol to the same person, so question mark is given there. So I cannot observe two outcomes for one single patient by giving two different treatments. I mean, this is impossible task, right? One person cannot be experimented two times. So I need two person, but they are similar. That's the whole idea in uh, the randomized control trials. Corresponding to the last column, I have some covariates like age, gender, etc. Now, one example will illustrate this. There's a problem called, does smoking uh, impact cardiovascular disease, as what is called a CVD, where age and gender act as nuisance variable. So data looks like this. Few patients are collected age, their gender is noted down, whether they smoke or not, and what is the, their heart disease problem, whether they suffer or not, one or zero. Now here note that <clears throat> smoking is a treatment. A person who smokes, whether he is likely to get CVD or not, this is what we want to investigate. Now I cannot do randomized control trial here, why? I cannot force one group of patients to smoke, other group of patients not to smoke. I cannot force to do that. I cannot force it. It's unethical, right? So I need to collect data. People who are here in the society, how many of them are smoking, whether they have CVD or not, how many of them are not smoking, and how, whether they have CVD or not. I do collect that data. That is possible for me. That what is called as observable data. I want to associate whether smoking and CVD are related or not. Does smoke, see, smoking cause CVD is the question mark. Now what I have, 
the age also plays an important part gender plays an important part why why is this so a person who is continuously smoking from younger age to the senior most a senior adult likely to have higher incidence higher probability of getting cvd as compared to a younger person who just started smoking right among male and females also there is a less percentage of females who go for smoking and cvd so that's why these age and gender they play a nuisance part smoking is the treatment cvd is my response variable now what is the problem here problem here is i want to know whether smoking impacts cvd or not remember again i remind you i cannot conduct randomized trial i cannot say person smoke and i will watch you whether you suffer from heart problem or not that is unethical not possible so i have this data with me how do i proceed <clears throat> and here comes the tool called propensity score analysis propensity is the probability the concept which was proposed in 1983 very popularly used millions of medical research papers and other domains people have used this technique to analyze observable data the purpose of psa is to select observations from your control and treatment groups that are highly comparable to use in the final analysis try to understand that those who haven't done any uh, study of design of experiments what i am trying to do is i am trying to find out two similar persons two similar with respect to age gender and other comorbidities and then applying the treatments to see that which treatment is better that's what uh, naturally happens in rcts that is randomized controlled trials which doesn't happen in observable data a obese person like covid it happened you know earlier people were not knowing suddenly a person was suffering from covid used to get heart attack then doctors realize the other comorbidities are playing role a person with diabetes and high blood pressure need to be taken more care than the other normal persons so sudden heart attack used to happen these are the nuisance factors now how do i control that this is possible provided i want to develop a vaccine for persons without comorbidities and with comorbidities how do i find it out so propensity score analysis helps you to do that we want to see quickly what is it i'll skip these things for example this persons are there in your group target group the control group no smoking treatment group those who smoke what i want to try is the similarity of these two groups a person uh, maybe a little younger age he smokes another person who doesn't smoke but is younger a person wearing full suit and uh, smoking and other is without full suit but not smoking there is some similarity so i collect these two and now this matching is being done the last one also so i find out some similarity among them their age the appearance the physical appearance and so on i collect their and their responses and then analyze the data see in randomized trial what happens is you are distributing it randomly irrespective of that assuming that they are all similar here artificially we are trying to find similar persons now this can be done through the following thing what is called as counterfactual in the data this is a very important concept finding similar individuals to compare with those of similar age gender etc now artificially this is done through a thing called propensity score a very simple definition but very 
powerful measure ei is equal to probability d equal to 1 given x so what does it do it does a balancing act now this is the probability that assigning treatment given the set of covariates this covariates are the nuisance variables or whatever called as confounding variables conditional on the propensity score the distribution of observed baseline covariates will be similar enough between treated control see forget about this complicated sentence what it means is this propensity score finds out artificially similar looking patients let us say like this now here the manually i have done that matching this particular measure does it probabilistically it helps you to find out if ps the value is same similar or very close then we say that two patients two individuals are similar now here how many similar people are there one may be the the, uh, the black blazer students are wearing i can say they are similar they are coming from one group one institute because the one the blue color is again different color so that i can detect that now this manually can be done through propensity score automatically you can do it <clears throat> this is the theory behind that <clears throat> which i'll skip now so what this is a powerful theorem which proved by rosenbaum and rubin in 83 uh, in the central role of propensity scores in observable data now it is widely used in social sciences and healthcare and other business uh, domains where you have lots of lots of data but you don't know what uh, how to study cause and effect things see we are trying to answer why almost every time So there are two things in statistics we are interested in one is what is called as correlation the association ship another is the cause effect the entire afternoon session is devoted for the first part association and correlation this part is about why the causation so from association to causation and this particular paper uh, published in a journal called biometrica so uh, those who are interested they can refer to that 1983 paper a lot of material and a lot of research papers have appeared based on this particular thing so what it says is if you compute this ei similar individuals can be detected there is a theory behind that so this theorem tells you that psm attempts the pro propensity score measure attempts to reduce the bias due to confounding variables that can be found in an estimate of see for example feeding trials you are interested in uh, promoting a new brand of nutritional uh, new trial let us say new diet or nutritional diet or uh, some protein product now a obese person already healthy person he takes it you cannot detect the difference but an anemic person takes the protein diet probably his health may get improved now what we see is that the condition of the person anemic or obese or a healthy person will play as will spoil your results so what i am trying to see is can i get two anemic person and try this new product on both of them and see whether really it is impacting or not that is done artificially through propensity score analysis question is how do i compute this what is our definition of ps ps is this ei is equal to probability of d equal to 1 given xi yeah i have that i am keeping watch on my profile so ei is equal to probability of d equal to 1 given xi question i want to ask you is how do i compute these probabilities because what i am saying is try to understand once i know these probabilities artificially i can create this similarity similarity between two individuals with respect to certain covariates 
Simple to understand, age and gender, I can just see manually. But in general, if you have a series of covariates, like I said, uh, in business organizations, we have weather, time slot, the breakfast, the lunch, and the dinner, etc. In general, in medical thing, you have all those things, body parameters, how do I find out similarly behaving patients. For that, I need these probabilities. <clears throat> so one simple tool is used called logistic regression model. I can find out these probabilities using certain models. So now, after one session, you will listen about ML models, machine learning. This can also be used here to estimate these EIs. <clears throat> Naturally, better model, better approximation, better, better results. But 83s and 90s, at that time, not much work was done on machine learning. Logistic was very much pop popularly used in almost all medical uh, research articles. Now also people continue to use as a baseline model and improve upon that. Once I calculate propensity scores, what do I mean by that? Compute propensity scores. It means I compute these EIs. For a given individual, I get these probabilities. How do I get it? By using some statistical or machine learning model. One model people are using nowadays is neural network model. I know XIs, which I have collected, the list of ancillary variables. I calculate these models among the treated patients. For example, those who are wearing mask, given their age and comorbidities, how do I compute these probabilities? So use this uh, logistic, for example, one upon one plus exponential and all that. Having computed propensity scores, that is EI, what should I do? The main goal is the balancing act. Now that, let us go quickly. How of propensity score analysis? Age and gender both impact smoking and all these three impact CBD. As I said, a more senior person is smoking quite a long time, naturally is likely to get high probability of getting CBD as compared to a younger person who just started smoking. A female as opposed to male probably smoking less and therefore quite less chance of getting CVD. So all these put together, CVD will get impacted. I want to evaluate this. Is there any truth in this? Okay. So how do I use propensity score after I calculate that? So there are following steps which follow. We identify these covariates. See, the, the list of finding out covariates is a very critical in every research study. Whether it is a swiggy or zomato problem or in medical science or health, any other social science problems, finding out what impacts what is very, very critical. Apparently, gender and age, I know immediately that they're going to affect your uh, patient status. But there are subtle factors like lipid profiles, a very important role in CVD. How do I know that? What are the ranges for that? So that's how you have to be very critical about it. That is step number one. Step two, I want to compute EI, estimate the propensity score. Now, having done that, how do last stage is obtain the matched pairs, the picture which I showed you, the smoking person wearing suit and therefore the other one is also similar, I matched it. How did I do that? With the help of propensity score. That is step three. Having obtained the matched samples, last stage is, I, this is something that is very simple to understand. Uh, I'll skip that lack of time. Last step is, once I get the match samples, I proceed using standard statistical tools to find out the effectiveness of your treatment. 
like you do it student t test or pair t test or unless a variance and so on uh i'll skip that let's just we'll go to the last one i have this data yes this particular data set which i have with me by get uh, look at the gender and age star p values are significant that means this gender and um, they are they are really the nuisance factors they need to be balanced similar kind of people should be selected for the study i do propensity score analysis and compute these statistics again and now you see only one part the this one age and gender p values age is now non significant p value is very high earlier case it was star i had put it it was significant gender is not significant i could not balance out gender but age i could do that so what does it mean again i recall this image of those smokers and non smokers just two minutes i'll take and then i stop i just try to find out manually how people are looking similar and collect them together i did it through propensity score where is that okay forget it here i do it numerically where is that box yeah i assign these scores 0.25 0.5 0.5 and just see on other group where does it fall a uh, very close to other one other group for 0.25 is close to 0.22 i select that one 0.11 is rejected crossed so i throw away that particular individual this how the matching is done and the last one is here i think i have calculated t statistic so the whole idea just to summarize in two lines one i am trying to find out the similar looking people now here if i want again i repeat the black color and the blue color they are different groups i can detect that manually the same thing can be detected through propensity score analysis now there is a last warning and then i stop propensity analysis has played a very major role in many of these studies but now there is a paper by stanford and mit person by gary king and uh, this person in 2018 they have commented that propensity score need not be used for matching purpose because they are very dangerous rather than increasing balancedness it increases imbalancedness inefficiency model dependence and all not is heavily criticized in this particular paper so they have pointed out the weaknesses of course they have some made some suggestions also but one has to be very careful in using these techniques so again i go back to my first slide poor research is possible if you forget nuisance variables with this note i stop it here researching research uh, do better research less research keeping in mind the impact of nuisance variables uh, there are some suggestions in these slides you can read it later okay thank you for patient hearing yeah sharp 4 o'clock i stopped then oh, no questions secondary data what is that <coughs> observable data there is one um, implicit assumption that as cochran has defined in way back 53 that some you have something in mind cause and effect so in that way we say this quasi experiment you are collecting the data for some purpose 
So it depends how that secondary data has come. Some people use that terminology, primary, secondary, and so on. So this is how we go about it. In the example one that you have discussed, uh, uh, if the pre-processing of the data would have been done, I think uh, the points that you were raising or you were discussing, the answer would have been there. What, what is that? The finding out the correlation or importance of or which all are the factors which matter in analysis or which factors should be taken into consideration or which uh, Yeah, pre-processing is required. Right, pre-processing right. should have been the... Yes, very important. How do I find out covariates? Actually, for that, we need to do some pre-processing. Yes, sir. So the entire thing goes with that. Plus, uh, in that code I have written, the missing value detection, etc. Uh, I have not implemented it here, but actually I have done it. Otherwise, uh, the entire thing will get spoiled. So the whole idea is, in medical research, you have observable data, and you are looking for cause and effect thing. So how do I go about it? That's what research means to you. Okay, thank you.